I'm Jim Ryan, President and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, and welcome to the PlayStation Showcase. At PlayStation, we believe in pushing boundaries and setting the benchmark for creativity and excellence in entertainment. We always love the opportunity to speak directly with our community. The new technology in PS5 enables development teams to build more exciting, immersive, and compelling worlds, showcasing their creative vision as storytellers. We've never been more grateful for the PlayStation community. So thank you for allowing us time to share some significant updates and brand new content. So without further ado, let's look at some new and amazing games. Peace is a lie. That is what the Sith believe. They promise power. Now they wield it. We face the greatest Sith in generations. They must be stopped.
인류를 구원하려는 신성한 의무를 다하지 못하였습니다. 하지만 이제 저희가 다시 내려와 남은 목숨 끝까지 바쳐 싸울 것을 맹세하오니 부디 저희의 죄를 사하여 주시고 저희를 거두어 주시고 저희를 유혹에 빠지지 않게 하소서. 지하시설, 방공호 같은 건가? 여긴 지하철역이야. 사람들을 태우고 거미줄처럼 도시를 누비던 교통수단이지. 뭐, 다 지난 얘기지만 말이야. 잠깐이. 네이티브가 시체에 기생하고 있다니. 외부인 그날 이후 지성의 도시들은 모두 예비처럼 폐허가 됐어. 잘라 신군들의 우주로 달아나고 나간 운명들은 이곳에 버려졌지. 마더 스피어의 구원을 아직 기다리고 있는 거야. 이브 조심해. 전방에서 뭔가. 문 무너지겠어. 저건 알파 네이티브야! 
No end credit scene here. This ain't no super duper hero movie. secret, but I'm a pretty big deal. Real big deal. We are getting out of the city, Homer. I promise we'll go somewhere that loves cats. No more fights. Clean air. Bright skies. Hey. Technically not Earth. Well, not what you would call Earth, anyway. I swear to God, asshole, show yourself. Show myself, I've shown. Where are you? Right here, at the end of your arm. Oh, hello, yes. Okay, so let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Did I just do that? We did. I just moved it with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts, I'll probably fly next. No, you're just being ridiculous. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there was a line. <laughs> Our land suffers. You are the only hope we have. You're special. You're the one that's planning on facing off with Sila. Tanta Sila is the strongest and most formidable of all the Tantas. You will be doing our land a great service by killing her. No name for a demon. I am the one you seek. The one and only Tanta Sila. For decades, Team Rainbow has been the shield against the worst global threats imaginable. Hostage situations, biological weapons, the threat of nuclear war. But now, we face the greatest terror our world has ever known. at tomorrow we will move as one we will think as one we will do whatever it takes as one together we enter the unknown Together, we fight for our future. And 
no one will be left behind. It's coming for me. Whatever you do, don't go out in the dark. Stay in the light. The Deerfest guests have already started to arrive. Just ran into one on the ferry. A famous artist, no less. Alice? Alice? My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wick. Last night I woke up to a nightmare. I was missing a week. What had happened to me? I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. With it, I could save myself. I could save Alice. Carl Stucky! Pleased to meet you. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. Salvation. Mari. Mari! The time is nigh. The world rests on the precipice of transformation. A new age will dawn.
guardians of the galaxy. You came here seeking truth. A choice. The matriarch wishes to share it with you. United in the light of belief, all suffering, all grief will end. Oh! Ah! Ah! What's wrong with you? Oh, I think... Yeah, I'm, I think I'm having a heart attack. Cease this at once. Ah. Fine. Cosmo! How you doing, buddy? Grand Unifier Raker, leader of the Church of Truths. During that ritual with the priest, they kept talking about a promise. It was like they were drinking funky juice or something. Or joined the cult. So let us investigate for you. Always a catch, Peter Quill. And not fun kind with Bo. Hey, world mind, long time no see. The current probability of defeating the Universal Church of Truth is 0.3%. Is that bad? It sounds bad. It is. I hope you've got one hell of a speech plan, Peter. That makes two of us. I'll take you to the stars. Follow me! Show you who we are! We're space riders with no name. Take you to the stars. Show you who we are! By rejecting the promise, you have proven yourselves unworthy, and you must be destroyed! That was completely intentional. The Milano's on her way. Thanks, bud. who painted up a prison and named it Freedom. Locked us all in one repeating day, their eternity, an endless party that you can never leave. I am a storm Round and round we shall go. Places supposed to be unforgettable. A bunch of spaced out science nerds, brainwashed cultists flinging bombs, Whatever these guys are doing, all spewing Eon's bullshit. So how come I don't remember shit? This party island hangover is none my thing. My thing is answers. Who are these people? What do they want with me? And why is she always one step ahead? Come on, Colt. You gotta put this together. Yeah. 
Somebody built this place. Somebody's sending me these messages from the future, the past, whenever. And some jackass wrecked every plane out here. Is this a contest for them? Some type of experiment? How does this time loop work? Does anybody What's remember? Why is everyone Shut wearing a mask? mask? <laughs> right. What the hell are you doing? Which notes anymore? Who am I? Colt, I want you to remember. I want you to remember why you came here. Huh. Is that... Damn, I look good. I've imagined myself a way out. Gonna break this time loop before it breaks me. treasure of all time is within our grasp. The task of Ganesh? Now that's not an easy find. Last I checked, we're all a bunch of thieves digging around where we shouldn't. Hang on! Oh. 
Oh, crap! Everyone obsessed with this treasure gets what they deserve. Are you ready to seek your fortune? I'm Herman Hulst, head of PlayStation Studios. PlayStation Studios, at its heart, is a diverse and passionate group of storytellers at our collective of AAA studios all across the globe. Everything we do is driven and inspired by storytelling. As creators, PlayStation 5 gives us the opportunity to push the boundaries of storytelling even further. Our world-class development teams at PlayStation Studios have already delivered such incredible gaming experiences for PS5, and we're only just getting started. As you'll see today with the lineup of exclusive games coming for PlayStation Studios, we're going to continue to drive innovation, advance gaming, while always embracing the legacy of PlayStation and creating games that matter. Games that you're not going to find anywhere else. Enjoy. At the dark end of the street That's where we always meet I think we can stand But we don't know 
as long as I can remember, I have looked for an equal. One who could push me. One who could surprise me. One who could even beat me. Yet all I found is disappointment. Will one of you finally give me what I desire? is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to pick a fight with God. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard? Maybe that's what Mother wanted. What mother wanted? Well, I'd recognize that dour expression anywhere. Odin's got tricks up his sleeve we haven't dared to consider. What if there was someone who could help us? You mean Tyr, the old god of war in these lands, who is dead? Well, for a dead man, Odin seemed pretty keen on seeing he wasn't found. If he's out there, we gotta find him. Come in. What in all yarns be the happen to him? We're trying to stop Ragnarok, to help people. And what if the only way to do that is war? War is not the only way. Stop thinking like a father for a moment and start thinking like a general. No! You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you a calm and reasonable person? In moments of crisis, panic does nothing. Is it? Let it serve you. Tear. Are you coming with us? enough. Well, some of them.
Unbelievable. Yes, yes, inconceivable. See myself as fairly reasonable. But at times I can be stubborn. So if I have to, I will rock the boat. I don't tend to take the easy road. That's just not the way I like to roll. Shoot things probably unfeasible. I've done already a hundredfold. A hundredfold is probable that I might press the envelope. Ideas so astronomical. Sometimes I find them comical. Yeah. Recognize that dour expression anywhere. And that was the PlayStation Showcase. We've got more info and updates coming right now. And I'm in fact joined by no less than PlayStation Studios head Herman Hulst. Uh, Herman, really strong showing here from PlayStation Studios tonight, including an awesome new look at GT7 and finally a release date. GT7 is coming in March, and I don't think fans are going to be disappointed with what Yamauchi-san and Polyphony have been working on. And what we're doing with GT7 is we're pulling from the entire history of the franchise, taking some of the best features into GT7. GT campaign, arcade missions, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, I got a chance to play, and it just looks and plays sensationally. The haptics, the vibrations, you feel the rolls, the pull and the weight of the, of the different cars. I'll tell you, the one thing that I personally really, really liked is the break-in variations through the adaptive triggers that really kind of makes you, it makes you feel like you're an incredible racer. And for me, that's great. Great to hear that about GT7. I can't wait to play that. But I also really wanted to talk about Insomniac. I mean, this is a studio that is absolutely on fire the last year, maybe 18 months, with Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart. And now two big reveals tonight in the form of Marvel Spider-Man 2 and Marvel's Wolverine. It's kind of a shock. You work really closely with Insom, Herman. So what can you tell us about just why uh, Insom gets so fired up about the Marvel Universe? I mean, Sid, you said it, Insomniac are on fire. They've been just so productive. And I think the team in Insomniac, they're really always challenging themselves to raise the bar with their approach to storytelling and, and craftsmanship. And it's really evident in the consistently high quality of games that they've been delivering over the years. I think on top of that, they really, really prize collaboration amongst their team. And that collaboration that that also extends to the to, to the way that they work with other PlayStation teams, but also their work with their great partners at Marvel. And that collaboration resulted in the amazing first two Marvel Spider-Man games. And I know that Insomniac are extremely excited to be further expanding the universe into Marvel Spider-Man 2 now. And they're also gonna be raising the bar again, you know, in terms of immersion, action, visual fidelity. I think Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be a spectacular showpiece for gaming. And they're also so thrilled to then bring gamers an emotional and a suspenseful journey into Marvel's Wolverine. I think that PlayStation fans are really gonna be in for a treat over the next few years. Very cool, very exciting times, and, and, and on multiple fronts. Tonight, we also got our first big look at God of War Ragnarok. Herman, what can you tell us about where Santa Monica Studio is going with this one? You know, like many of the fans, I'm personally really, really invested in the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. We got to see in the trailer that there's some real tension brewing between them as Ragnarok approaches. So, you know, I can't wait for players to see how that relationship between them evolves. And you gotta trust me when I say that Santa Monica Studio have prepared quite a few twists and turns for players as they set up the finale of the Norse saga in God of War Ragnarok. We're gonna get an update on God of War Ragnarok from Santa Monica Studio here in just a moment. But before you go, Herman, I wanted to get your take on Horizon Forbidden West. Now, we've learned that this one is coming out in February. I am sure that by this point you have played it. So what has jumped out to you? What can you tell us about the game? I've had a chance to play the game on, on PS4 and PS5, and it looks great on both. 
For, for PS5, the level of detail on the Aloy, her kit, her lighting, it's just exceptional. Even more amazing because the environments have so much going on too. From the ruins of San Francisco to those new underwater areas, everything just looks breathtaking. And it loads really fast because of the SSD. Plus, the combat in the game offers so much variety. It's all based on player choice, there's so many cool weapons and tools, and when you combine these together, that comes in really handy uh, when you're dealing with the new machines. On PS5, the haptic feedback on the controller, I think, in my mind, really adds to the experience, you know, when you're firing arrows and, and, and the other ammo. You know, the team at Guerrilla, I know them so well. I'm super proud of them. They're creating something incredibly special. And I just can't wait for gamers to get the next chapter of Aloy's adventure in their hands. Thanks for the update, Herman. We're joined now by Eric and Corey from Santa Monica Studio. And I wanted to check in with you two on the big announce we saw just a few minutes ago, God of War Ragnarok. We finally got our first big look at it. And actually, Eric, I wanted to start with you. You've been involved with every single God of War, including 2018's God of War, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Sid. I've been with the studio since uh, 2004 uh, in many different capacities, working with both Santa Monica and Randy at Dawn on the God of War franchise. And uh, I don't know why, but they thought it'd be a good idea to say, hey, do you want to direct this one? And so <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm directing God of War Ragnarok, or as Corey likes to call it, never heard of it. Um, so that's the update on that. So Eric, uh, why the shift in leadership on God of War Ragnarok? Um, it's always been a tradition here at Santa Monica to change the directors across the games. You know, we've had really good success with that. I, I, Corey's been the only repeat director, and you know, rightfully so. He's pretty damn good at what he does. So that's kind of what it is. The important thing for us is to be able to kind of get a fresh perspective each time, uh, but also, you know, a fresh pair of legs in the sense that you're really exhausted at the end of finishing one of these things. So you got to con somebody else into doing it, like him. So Eric, what aesthetics or themes sort of resonate with you as a creative? I mean, I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, how, how do you see yourself leaving your fingerprints on God of War Ragnarok? It's kind of the, the designer in me wants to answer one way, but as a director, you have to answer a different way. I think you have to learn how to jettison your own a profession when you, when you switch over to the director's role, which I'm sure Corey can uh, understand. I mean, he kind of animated a little bit on God of War 2, and we kind of had to throw it all out, except for that sneaky backflip that Kratos has never done again that we left in. But that's the perk of being the director, I guess. Um, but, you know, from my point of view, like, we want to tell a very heartfelt and epic story as, you know, a father and son go on a journey, and they, they kind of struggle with holding on with, to stuff and letting go of things. You know, it's a very difficult kind of human condition that we all deal with. And uh, we kind of want to arrive at that by taking like slices of life or family, you know, drama, if you will, and kind of juxtapose that against big Norse backdrop. And, you know, at the end, we just want to have an ending that feels very, you know, surprising yet inevitable based on all those things. But it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm from the Midwest, so like slice of life, very common mundane things are just as interesting as big world events. And so we try to collide those things together, it's, you know, make an experience that's very worthy of the God of War name. So with the game officially being called God of War Ragnarok, um, I guess it, it doesn't take a genius to think that perhaps Ragnarok factors into this game in some manner. Can, can you confirm that, Eric? Yeah, I mean, you can't call the game God of War Ragnarok and not have Ragnarok happen in the game. So, you know, it's, it's going to happen. We're going to cap off the Norse series with it. Um, and I think Chris Judge said it best in the announced trailer last year, prepare yourselves. The last game ended with a teaser of sorts for Thor. And I just got to know, was that Thor's voice we heard in the trailer just a few minutes ago? That was definitely Thor's voice uh, that we heard in the trailer. Uh, Thor is being played by Ryan Hurst, um, which you might know him from uh, Sons of Anarchy. He played Opie, one of my favorite characters ever. Um, and we're just delighted to have him come play in the God of War sandbox. And uh, his take on Thor and our take visually on Thor is very different than the, the hunky Australian you might know. You know, he's much closer to the uh, Norse mythology version. You know, he's this big, burly, almost hedonistic man-child, red hair, you know, left-handed, just, just a little off kilter than the Thor that a lot of people know right now. So I can't wait for people to experience more of that when the game's done. We also heard the name Odin in tonight's trailer. So I imagine if we're gonna experience Ragnarok, Odin's gonna have to play a pretty big role here, right? Definitely, I mean, Odin is the all-father of all the realms, so he's gonna show up when Ragnarok happens. Um, we are very, very happy to have uh, Mr. Richard Schiff come on to play Odin for us. Uh, you may know him as Toby from the West Wing. 
Um, this was one that we never thought was going to happen. It was like kind of a shot in the dark, and uh, he got back to us, and we walked him around the mocap volume, and he was just like, I've never done anything like this before. Let's do it. And uh, so the kind of rest is history. So I can't wait for people to experience that and see how he factors in. And it's a very different take, again, much like Thor. You know, he's like a old man who's just kind of busy with his own things and doing whatever he wants, and uh, he's, he doesn't live in a castle or anything like that. So it's, it's a, again, a different take, kind of what we do. We just take what's known and curveball it a little bit and, you know, make it special. We also saw a couple of new characters tonight. So what can you tell us about them? Are you talking about the little squid? <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about Tyr. Tyr, the big guy. Yeah, yeah, he's the, the Norse God of War. Um, and the Curtis and Trace have finally found him. We, we talked a lot about him in 2018, so we were like, well, you might as well show him to the people. And then the last character we saw at the trailer, you know, like with the little wink and smile from Anger Boda, she's one of the last remaining giants, um, and her story is pretty amazing and how it fits into the world of God of War. Um, Tyr is being played by uh, Ben Prendergast, um, who's been completely absorbed in the role, even though he is not a giant as Tyr is. Um, and then uh, Anger Boat is being played by uh, Leia De Leon Hayes, who's a complete treasure on set. She's been amazing. Watching her chemistry with the other characters has been amazing. And she's one of the last giants that's living. So we have those characters and a few more. And, you know, there's a lot of different monsters you saw in there. And, it's been so many talented people at the studio building this trailer and putting it together. I just want to give a shout out to the team. I love you guys. You know, I wish you could be here doing this interview with me. I wish you were all behind me right now at the studio. Um, that would have been completely amazing. And, you know, lastly, to our fans, uh, we have a saying at the studio that we are fans of our fans. And I cannot wait to watch all the tweets, the messages, the reaction videos that you guys put out and, and our, our team to be able to take that into heart and uh, just get excited and hyped and then uh, use that to push us through to finish the game for you guys. So thank you very much. Now, Corey, we haven't heard a whole lot out of you here tonight. So now that we know you're not directing God of War Ragnarok, I was hoping maybe you could give us a little clue about what you may or may not be working on next. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd like me to just spill the beans and tell you everything that's going on right now. We're actually doing a bunch of stuff. It's really exciting, all the things that we're doing and you're tempted to know what is this, but I, don't really have anything I can talk about right now specifically, mostly because we're, we're really focused on God of War Ragnarok, that I am incredibly excited that I finally understand that that's what everyone was saying, God of War Ragnarok. I was way off. I was thinking it was something else that they were talking about. I think we'll, we'll wait to, to get any deeper into anything else until later. We'll talk again, Sid. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. And thank you, Eric. And next up, we have Ryan Treadwell. He's the lead producer at Aspire. And wouldn't you know, just a little while ago, we got the announcement of a remake for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So, Ryan, I guess my question is, is this like a, a remaster of the original game or what's going on here? It's so much more, Sid. This is a complete remake of this beloved Star Wars story. For Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake, we are rebuilding from the ground up while maintaining that integrity of story and character from the original. So Ryan, how much of a remake are we talking about here? I mean, is this updating some graphics, adding some, some higher resolution modes? You know, the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is a true classic and one of our favorite Star Wars stories ever. We want to honor that original story and make it as impactful for players today. In terms of the visuals, we have an opportunity to present this story with a much higher level of fidelity than was possible in the past, while making sure that we're being authentic to what players loved about that original game. So we know Aspire from bringing classic Star Wars games to modern consoles, uh, but this is a much bigger project than anything the studio's tackled before. So what can you tell me about the team behind the game? You're absolutely right. While Aspire has enjoyed a great relationship with Lucasfilm Games through our work bringing classic Star Wars games to new audiences on modern platforms, this project is on a completely different level to anything we have done before. That's why we knew we had to assemble the right team to do this project justice. We put together a team full of industry veterans from fan-favorite RPGs, even including the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It has been a really rewarding experience to assemble such a talented team to bring back an epic game. Of course, we're also working closely with the amazing teams at PlayStation and Lucasfilm Games. Together, we couldn't be more excited about what we'll be able to show you in the future. All of us are, of course, huge Star Wars fans too. One of the nice parts about building a team to make a big Star Wars game is the ability to instantly bond with all the new people of your favorite aspects of Star Wars. 
We all have different Star Wars memorabilia behind us in every call, and it always sparks up a good conversation. All right, thanks, Ryan. Very exciting stuff, and I'm definitely dying to see more of that one. Thank you, Sid. It will be some time before we're ready to show more, but we're very excited about being able to reveal more in the future. All right, and that's it for our show. You can catch up on all the big news on PlayStation.blog and check out all the trailers from tonight's PlayStation Showcase on YouTube. Thanks for watching. PlayStation.